Greetings. Welcome to Baba Yami. I'm your guide and host, Kwesi Kunadu. Welcome back for another episode. On this episode, we're going to talk about miracles. Now, most dictionaries in the English language define miracles as some extraordinary and welcome event or action that cannot be explained by natural or scientific law and thus resigned to some divine or religious or spiritual causation. In other words, miracles belong to the supernatural, or so we tend to believe. Now, I want to disturb and disrupt that view, that common view and understanding that we tend to have about miracles. But first, I want to share with you a story. And the story comes from a recent book of mine, Yours Truly, entitled Three, These Women of uh, This Fortress, or Many Black Women of This Fortress, um, referring to this book right here. And I want to share with you a passage from the epilogue of the book that will lead us as a bridge into this discussion about miracles, whether they are natural or supernatural or what about them, that I want to disturb and provide you a different perspective for you to consider. So the epilogue and the passage I'm going to read you from the epilogue is between a German-speaking pastor and a group of unnamed indigenous or indigenous peoples in what is now Ghana, West Africa. And this is in the um, 17th century, late 17th century, right? So roughly 300 years and plus ago. Now, he begins this way. The pastor wrote, if one tells them of the wonders which God performed long ago in the Old Testament, they immediately ask how many years ago it was that such wonders occurred. As if to say, if such long time has passed, how can one actually know such things? There's an engagement here. It's not simply a person who is propagating their belief and empty-headed group of people who are accepting it at face value. There's an engagement here. I want you to keep note of that. The pastor goes on. Others can tell of wonders which their supposed abusum, or spiritual force, and patron saint has performed, since they have not only heard such wonders narrated by their fathers, but have in part, so they claim, witnessed them. So these indigenous who are saying that we know of these wonders ourselves, and we don't need you to tell us um, from some book about wonders. For our purposes, miracles. Let's continue. The pastor says, If one speaks to them of God, of the Godhead, in particular of Christ, then one hears the blind people say all kinds of insulting and mocking things. That is, the indigenous are insulting and mocking, so the pastor claims whatever he's trying to preach or propagate. Somewhat undeterred, the pastor pressed on. He wrote, Concerning the conception and birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, they consider it impossible that a woman can become pregnant without the action of a man and give birth without losing her virginity. Of all the articles of belief which we Christians acknowledge with our heart and mouth, the articles of Christ's resurrection seems to these blind people particularly absurd and ridiculous. If one talks to them of Christ's resurrection, namely that on the third day he rose again from the dead, some of them consider it an impossibility and laugh at it. Others say it is nothing new, as there have been plenty of examples among them, the heathens, of people who have been killed and had come back alive again from the dead. Now, doctrinally frustrated and intellectually defeated, the pastor surmised all this as quote-unquote foolish talk. Now, for our purposes, none of this is foolish talk. What we consider to be miracles, or in the case of this pastor and indigenous that they're in conversation with, wonders, are in fact very natural. Uh, They're as natural as the trees behind me, as a dog you probably heard barking, as the insects that are chirping and crawling and doing their thing. All of these things are natural, but something happened along the way we, we come to consider these things to be divine or supernatural or something other than natural. And so I want to share with you series of wonders and miracles that I myself, like indigenous, have also witnessed with these two eyes that are piercing through the device or monitor that you're viewing this video. I'll tell you one, 
to begin with. And I'll follow by a few of them and add some analysis along with it. Now, I know, and I've seen with my own eyes, the sonogram where a woman had conceived of one child, right? And that was it. Um, no more intercourse. And, and during the stage of the first trimester, there were then two children in her womb. By the second trimester, there were three. And by the end of the second, there were four. And you might think, well, that's ridiculous. Like the pastor, that is, um, or the pastor or the indigenous responding to the pastor. That's ridiculous. That's impossible. It's not possible. I actually have the sonogram showing you each stage where you can see the fetus uh, appearing and moving, um, as it were, as the woman progressed throughout her pregnancy, right? Now, in an earlier time, this would not be talked about as being supernatural or otherworldly or divine. It would simply just be normal, right? And remember that our norms change over time. That is, what is normal dress when I was a young boy uh, is not normal dress. I mean, it's not in trending, it's not fashionable, or it might be, right? Because things have a way of coming back in style. But my point is that norms like the weather, like our tastes, like our habits, they shift over time. And so norm is a bar that is relative and that's not stable and that essentially moves and sometimes morph into something else. And so norms are not these fixed things that simply just pass along through time. Norms Right, they shift and change. And so something happened to our norm, whereby the natural and the so-called supernatural were really just fused as one. And that one was simply taken as being normal. And just like the indigenous peoples in 17th century um, Gold Coast, present-day Ghana, said, look, we've seen these things before. In fact, we know people who have died and come back from the dead as if there was nothing. And that's really what I'm trying to poke at here about our common view understanding about miracles or wonders that happen. I'll give you another story that I myself has witnessed. And so I witnessed where a child is about to die, right? And there's a discussion between the mother and father. The mother wants to take her to the hospital immediately or take her to a particular hospital that has the services that the child needs. The father is... Um, how can I say low budget? He's cheap and doesn't want to take the child to that hospital, I'm talking about the cost. Now, granted, the child's life is on the line. Right? He's talking about the cost. And a hospital that he wants to take her to, it is notorious for not coming back alive. And so the mother pushed on and said she's going to take care of this. And she began, you know, to pray, right? Pray to God and the Creator and all the spiritual forces that work at the behest at this particular great spirit. Right, and did some rituals for the child, right? Um, and then got her to the hospital. The surgery was successful. The child came out exceptionally well, recovered in a few days. And you might say it's a miracle because that child was not supposed to be alive. In fact, when the child got to the hospital, the doctor said if she waited a half an hour or an hour more, she would have been pronounced dead. And so this is an idea about the thing we tend to call wonders or miracles, in fact, are quite normal, right? I'll give you another story where there are several times where um, this man was supposed to die in an airline, meaning that there are people who are using all kinds of methods and means, both <laughs> physical or natural and, 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 and also um, spiritual, right? And to bring down this man's plane, right? Because he travels pretty often as a businessman. And, you know, um, every time, you know, he tells me the story that he experienced a turbulence, you know, he gets, you know, sometimes he had panic. But then it began to essentially said, look, he's going to put his faith in into the creator, into God. And he would say the prayer and do the rituals um, before he would travel. And um, even when he feels turbulence, you know, he would, you know, call out, you know, the name of the creator and, and call on all the positive, you know, productive forces that work at the behest of the CEO, right, of this great spirit. And he makes it through, right? And he has told me since then, then being sometime a year or two ago, you know, he travels, you know, back and forth and doesn't experience that anymore, even though 
and those people, those enemies of his, are still working their hardest, it doesn't phase or affect them. Right? And you may say, well, how is that? You know, how can either prayer or rituals and other intercessions um, provide for you know this impossibility? Right? Who can control the forces that either keep the airplane in the sky or bring the airplane down? Right? And that's what I'm getting at is that we human beings have this gift, right, from God, from the Creator, called ritual. Right? Certain particular acts that are done. In a, in, 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 a, in a fashion or manner to produce a particular outcome, but it has to work in what in concert with um, this great spirit and the forces that work with it. Now, of course, there are negative spirits or evil spirits that exist, right? And they walk among us. It's like there are good people, there are negative spirits who take the form of other human beings and therefore walk among us. And so you have the positive, you have the negative, right? And these two charges, these two forces, you know, they're in this ongoing uh, antagonism, right? All that said, miracles or wonders um, are always welcome, right? So, for example, um, and it was a young lady, you know, who recently was um, taking her child to school and um, a car jumped right in front of her, you know. And I tell you, at least according to how she told me, and I try to convey it as best as I can, the car came razor thin to her car, right, and sped off, right? Uh, she pressed the brakes and essentially closed her eyes because she thought it was going to be a very horrible accident, potentially losing her life and the child's life in the car. Uh, that's how fast the car was going. It came out of nowhere. Once that car that dashed past her, again, razor thin, closeness, by all accounts, and the people that were there, from what she tells me, you know, they ran to her and said, are you okay, are you okay? And they could not believe that the car was not touched. That's how close the other car was, how fast it was. And this was a moving and heavy vehicle, right? And so no harm, no scratch, no nothing, right? Or you might think again, oh, well, she was lucky. Perhaps it's luck, right? But what is luck, <laughs> right? It's a play on probability and forces. What are these forces? The forces that we don't control, right? They're of the what? non-human kind and so this is an example of wonders right because this particular woman uh is also a spiritualist right and that has something to do with the particular brush that she had with death potentially harm at worse uh, for her and her child and there are many other stories like this where we often say you know man it's a miracle you're alive or person wake up from a coma it's a miracle you're alive right and it's not really a miracle in the sense of it's a divine and supernatural again i want to think back to the story i share with you between the pastor and indigenous people and what is not Ghana. right these people spoke as if the wonders and the wondrous and the spiritual and supernatural were tightly braided and bound, that they were just one, right? That was the world view, that was the world sense, that was the way in which people lived and moved through the world naturally, normally. That was their norm, right? So what happened? Well, something like this happened. Something called modernity, or the modern world, and all the other trappings, all the isms that come along with the modern world, and all the, the gadgets and, and the um, the um, temptations, if you will, that come along with modernity begin to move us away from the closeness of the spiritual and temporal, that is the, the, the physical touchy-feely world, and of course, by, judged by our senses, and the other world, which our eyes may not see, but we can feel, we can sometimes, some of us can see, and many of us can actually experience, particularly during our dream state when our spirit, not hampered by this physical clothing, can move throughout the world uh, among other spirits and other forces, right? So we know intuitively, and we know through our dream state, and we know through other means that, you know, this tightly bounded world still exists, but our, our inability, right, our seduction to modernity and to the modern world and all the things that come with it, all the social media, all the things that distract us from this tightly bounded way, the way in which those 17th century folks in West Africa, and I'm sure other parts of the world, lived normally, right? That these things were simply just normal fact. They spoke so casually, according to the pastor's account, right? They spoke so nonchalant, as a matter of fact, as, oh, yes, we've seen that all the time, right? Nowadays, if we see a, a, a miracle or a wonder, we're astonished, right? We're, we're blown away. We're like, 
Really, right? When in fact, you know, I want us to think about miracles and wonders being part of the norm, right? And that indeed, right, that CEO, that creative force, right, that God is, right, a main portion, a main part uh, of what we consider to be miracles and wonders. Because think about it. If miracles and wonders are in fact the norm, then think about our possibilities as human beings, right? Think about our real potential. I don't mean just our cognitive potential, because of course, if we focus on making better machines, that's going to surpass human beings. That doesn't make us more human. It makes us less human. But how do we become more of what we are, right? In physical form, right? As, and in having a human experience, right? If miracles and wonders are the norm, if this temporal and physical world is not separated, it's not distant, it's not some foreign land, right? Is in fact what? As tightly bounded as we are, right? As flesh to breath and blood and bones, as tightly bounded as we human beings are, right? Let's think about it, consider it. And when we consider it, we can see that, you know, miracles and wonders are all about us, but they're not extraordinary. They're not supernatural. They're indeed what? Ordinary, natural, and norm, right? But we have to be receptive to seeing it, feeling it, and knowing it as such. I'll give you one last story in terms of what makes it a miracle, but it's quite, you know, normal, right? I've seen myself, right? Um, young people, uh, young children actually die. No heartbeat. And I kid you not, right? No heartbeat, no movement, right? And yours truly was part of the ritual in helping to bring them back to life where, um, you know, I prayed to the creator. I prayed to this God force. I prayed to this great spirit, right? To spare their life. That they didn't have a chance to live, and, and so on and so forth. I won't get into the details of it, but I, but I, you know, uh, humbled myself and, and did so, right? And within a day or two, these children were kicking and breathing and alive again, right? And you might think well, that's impossible. It's not impossible, right? Because I know these children, and so uh, I'll leave you with that, right? Think about that. All the stories I share with you, including this last capstone one. And the idea that let's be more like those 17th century Africans who had a very clear, uncluttered, right, and unseduced self about modernity and all the trappings that come with it and have a more, more organic, natural, and normative sense about what we may consider to be miraculous, wondrous, and the like. For Bob and Yami, I've been your guide and host. Please drop your questions, comments, and experiences about any miracles or wonders that you have seen or experienced yourself, and much more. Until next time, stay well.